Let's get started exploring files and folders in an operating system. We'll take a look at how you can change the way that files and folders are displayed, how you can change the order that they're displayed in, and how you can create subfolders to organize your files. We'll start with Mac OS first. This is the desktop, which is a great place to keep files and folders that you use frequently. If I click anywhere on the desktop, I can see in the upper left corner it says Finder. Whenever you're managing files or folders on a Mac, you're using the Finder. So I can see here on my desktop, I have a folder called Work Stuff. If I want to move it around, I could click on it, drag it somewhere else. And if I want to rename it, I can just click on the name, wait for a second, and it will allow me to type. So I could rename it to My Docs if I want, and if I want to change it back, click on the name and type a new name. I want to open this folder now, so I just double click on it. Each one of these icons I see represents a file that's inside of this folder. As you can see, there's a lot of stuff here. Personally, I find this view kind of confusing. It's hard for me to find the file that I'm looking for when I'm staring at a massive grid of icons. For that reason, I prefer to switch to list view, which I can do by clicking on this button with four horizontal lines. Now I can see my files in a vertical list, and I'm going to expand this window by dragging the right corner out. Now I can see the entire file name in this list, and I have a couple other columns with useful information as well. The second column, called date modified, tells me the last time this file was changed. The third, called size, tells me the size of the files expressed in bytes, kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes, or even terabytes. If those are new terms to you, I recommend checking out the video on digital storage terminology. And finally, kind. Now, just in case you don't see these same columns, note that you can right click on one of the column headers and it will allow you to choose which ones are viewed. So if size is not visible, you just check the box by size and it will appear. You can also change the order they're displayed in by grabbing them and repositioning them. Now back to this column called kind. I can see that this is a, an Adobe Photoshop file. Here's a text document. Here's a JPEG image. The way that the operating system knows what kind of file this is, is based on the file extension. So this is a JPEG image because it ends in .jpg. And the operating system knows this is a Photoshop file because it ends in .psd. Now, if I wanted to open a file, I could just double click on it. And if I wanted to rename it, I click on it once, wait a second, click again, and just like a folder, I can type a new name. Now notice something here. It has automatically selected for me the file name, but not the file extension. Notice that dot text is not selected. That's the Mac doing me a favor. It's trying to keep me from accidentally changing or removing the file extension. Because if I were to do that, the computer might not know what kind of file it is anymore and wouldn't know how to open it. And I'd have to fix the problem by renaming it and putting the extension back. So if I want to rename this, I could type a new name, like Spanish grammar, hit enter. Notice now that it's at the bottom of the screen. That's because this is sorting alphabetically and now it begins with an S. Okay, this folder is really kind of a mess. I've got a lot of files here and no real sense of organization. So I'm gonna create some subfolders to organize my files. I can create a new folder in a couple of ways. The first is to click on File in the Finder menu and choose New Folder. The alternative is to use a keyboard shortcut, which it's telling me right here is Shift-Command-N. I'm gonna use that in the future, but for now, I'm just gonna click here. And there's my new folder. It's called Untitled Folder, and I can name it now whatever I want. I'm going to call it Images. All right, it's time to start putting my images into this folder. There's a couple ways I can do this. If I just have a couple pictures and I want to do it quickly, I can just grab them and drag them in one at a time. However, that's a pretty slow process, and if I want to find all of my pictures quickly and move them all into that folder, there's a better way to go about it. Whenever you're trying to move or copy files from one place to another, I recommend using two finder windows. And here's what I mean by that. I'm going to take this window, move it over to the left, and resize it a bit. And now, instead of double clicking on this images folder, I'm going to right click and choose open in new tab. Now I have a new tab in this window and I can see the two files that I already dragged in here. What I want to do now is grab this tab and drag it over to the right. 
Notice now it has become its own window. Now I have a finder window on the left and one on the right, and this makes it much easier to move files from one place to another. So I can drag them from here over here now, and there's an even faster way. If I click on one of my files, hold down the command key, and then click on another, I can select multiple files. So I can grab several, drag them over all at once. Now that's better, but there's actually an even more efficient way to work. Something that you can do if you click on one of the column headers at the top of the window, it will sort by that category. So if I click on kind, notice all of my files now are sorted by file type. So I can see all my JPEG images are now in one place. I can select these now in an, in an even more efficient way as well. I can click on the top one hold down the shift key, click on the bottom one, and it will select everything in between. Now I can grab this entire list and drag it over into the other folder. There we go, much faster. Let's repeat that process for another file type. I'm gonna come, I'm gonna close this window, come back to my original folder. I'm gonna create a new folder using command shift N. I'm gonna call it Word Docs. As before, I'll right click on it, choose open in new tab. Then I'll grab that tab, drag it over to the right, and I've got my second window. Come back to my original window, and I'll find my Microsoft Word documents. And again, I know this is a Word document because it says Word document under kind, and because the file extension is either .doc or .docx. Those are very similar formats. One is for older versions of Word, and one is for newer. So I click on my first one, hold down shift, Click on the last one, drag them over to my other window, and I've moved them all. So as you can see, that makes the process much quicker. These modifier keys, where you can hold down Command and select multiple files, or where you can select a range of files by using Shift, are actually really universal. You can use them in Microsoft Word to select individual words, or to select a range of text in a paragraph. And you can use it in spreadsheet software to select multiple rows or a whole range of rows. Now, if you're using a computer that's running Microsoft Windows, the process is actually almost exactly the same. The only difference is, instead of using the command key, you would use the control key, because the command key is only on Macintosh keyboards. Let's quickly go through these same steps on a computer running Windows so you can see just how similar it is. This is the desktop on a computer running Windows 7. Depending on your Windows version, your screen may look a little different, but this process will be the same or very similar. As before, I have a folder on my desktop called Work Stuff. I can click on it, and I can click on the name if I want to rename it. I'm going to double click on it to open it. And once again, we have a massive grid of icons that's a little bit confusing to look at. In order to switch to a more useful view, I click on this little button in the upper right and I choose Details View. This is going to give me the most useful information. And there we go. Now I have my familiar columns with name, size, date modified, and type. Just as in Mac OS, I can click on a file if I want to and rename it. Notice, just as in Mac OS, it did not select the file extension. I'm going to create a new folder now by clicking on the New Folder button, and I'm going to call it Images. Now I'm going to reorganize my window a little bit. I'm going to drag this one over to the left, resize it a bit, and there's a great shortcut now. I can right-click on my Images folder and choose Open in New Window. Now I've got the Images folder in a separate window, which I'm going to move over to the right. I'm going to sort by file type now by clicking on the type header in that column. I'm going to scroll down, click on the first of the JPEG files. Now, similar to Mac, I can hold down control rather than command and select multiple files and drag them over like that. Or, even quicker, I can use shift. Where I click on the first one, scroll to the bottom, hold shift, click the last one, and drag them all over at once. So as you can see, this process is very similar in Windows as it is in Mac OS. Once you're familiar with one operating system, the others start to make a lot more sense.